past five in the afternoon here in Welba. And we're about 90 kilometres west of Seville. It's been beautifully warm outside, in contrast to inside the stadium, which has been bitterly cold. Just about ready for our next match, which is the first of the men's doubles semi finals. The number five seeds, Kokoro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi, are up against the number nine seeds, Ong Yu Sin and T. E. E. Well, for the Malaysians, they're on a quest to win Malaysia's first ever gold medal across all five disciplines. Now when we look at the draw, six different nationalities, two from Japan, two from Malaysia, seven seeds, three of the top eight seeds only. And in the semi-final stage, well, we're going to concentrate, first of all, on the top half of the draw. Led out by the number five seeds, Takura Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi. to reach a fifth final in six tournaments played, their last six tournaments. Well, they've had a remarkable run. Winners of the Denmark Open, the Indonesian Masters, the World Tour Finals, reached the final of the Indonesian Open as well. So the final of all three tournaments in Bali last month. Well, I can tell you this will be a sixth meeting between these two pairs, and of the previous five, Hoki and Kobayashi have won four of them, including the last two. The last time was the semi-final of the World Tour Finals, which Hoki and Kobayashi went on to win. 21-18, 21-15 in Bali, in 39 minutes. So for the Malaysians, well, the first medalists in men's doubles for Malaysia for 11 years since Kuki and Kiat and Kambu Kiong in Paris in 2010. Takora Hoki is 26 years of age, born in Yamaguchi, and he and his partner are enjoying their second consecutive week at their career high of number four. It's a third world championship for them, and they were silver medalists two years ago in Basel, losing out to Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Sekiwan in three games. The left-handed Kobayashi is also 26 years of age, born in Miyagi Prefecture on the east coast of Hongshu. Well, they had a bye in the first round by virtue of their seeding, and then they had a marathon match against them. Kai Xian and Liu Chen, who had won the World Championship previously, that was four years ago, Liu Chen, and since then have been getting, quite frankly, better and better. The Grimley brothers in the third round, and then that Siwon and Takauchi, their teammates in the quarter final. So to Tiu Yi Yi, who's 28 years of age from Hua, Johor. And they, like their opponents, are at a career high, a career high of 12. It's a fourth week in total. Third World Championship for the Malaysians, who have seen in nine here this year. Ong Yu Sin is the taller of the two, as you can see. He was born in the ancient city of Malacca and will turn 27 next month. Well, prior to this year, the best they've done in what their two previous World Championships was a second round loss. Here, uh, they had gone from strength to strength. They had a bye in the first round. In the second round against Ipa in Kia, they had to come from 10-18 down in the second game. And then beat two seeded pairs back to back. The number eight seeds, Ranky Reddy and Shetty, that was three games, as was the Olympic champions. Li Yang and Wang Chin in the number three seeds. So beating the Olympic champions, uh, you've got to 
respect to pair who can do that and it must mean that they're in very good form so our court officials for this one so it is judge Chiapini umpire Larson from Denmark Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Yogi Kubashi, Takoro Hoki, Japan. And on my left, Hong Yu Sin, Tiri Yi, Malaysia. Tiri Yi to serve for Yogi Kubashi. Double. Play. So the first of the men's doubles semi-finals, the Malaysians, oh! the far side of the court. Seven, 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 nine, and Tiu Yi up against the number five seeds, Takuro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi. Kobayashi, the left-hander. That's a nice angle for Tio Yi And Steen, it's fascinating that one of these two pairs obviously will be in the final and one of these two pairs could create history because no badminton players from Malaysia have ever won a world championship gold. And as far as Japan is concerned, whilst they have 28 medals, six gold, six silver and 16 bronze across the five disciplines, They've never won gold in either mixed doubles, and they have a chance tomorrow with Watanabe and Higashino, and they've never won gold in men's doubles. So history could possibly be made. It's always exciting when that happens, isn't it, when new records are set. Yeah, it is, and it's, it's also uh, interesting that it is uh, Hoki and Kobayashi who were in the final in, in Basel. But since then, up until Sudirman Cup here, they, I'm sorry for exaggerating, but they barely won a match since last year's, or 2019's final. And um, I think uh, they can thank two other Malaysians, Aaron Jones, who um, gave them some confidence in the two team tournaments. Started out by losing to them in the group stage in Sudiaman Cup beat them in the knockout stage and then again beat them in Thomas Cup. And then suddenly they went on to win Denmark Open. Yeah. And I would have loved to be in the room there when they woke up and said, hey, you, we, we won that tournament. What? Yeah. Did, did we? We're not playing today? No. We're playing another tournament. Yeah. And then going on to French, doing well there. Mm. Winning Indonesian Masters. <laughs> we, we won again. Yeah. What's going on with this? We're actually quite good. Yeah. And they are quite good. Four finals in the last five tournaments, trying to make it five finals in six tournaments. Oh, that's that's it, in. it just shows what happens when you get attention, when you oh, are asked to uh, be the leaders after Kamura and Sonoda oh. and uh, Hiroyuki Endo retire after the Olympic Games. This was then the number one pair. Yeah. So all the attention all, from the coaches, all the help, all the... Well, it's up yeah. to you, next man up, and then you suddenly you get some confidence mm -hmm. beating uh, Saul and... and uh, Chuck? Yeah. Then I think the, the uh, reminiscence of um, 2019 World Championships comes in. Is okay, maybe we were actually quite good all the time. It was actually okay that we were in the final. Yeah. And uh, Hawkey here, he's just been amazing. Yeah. Well, they both have, but um, uh, he's, he's a very spectacular player on the front court, and Kobayashi is from the back 
Yeah, it's definitely their favourite formation, isn't it? With Hokey going yeah. forward. And then so and um, oh. you and on they've also played really, really well. I think uh, they've been so good in um, in their preferred formation with um, Tui Yi on the front court. I had him. Uh, suspected to have a, an injury to his shoulder because he wasn't hitting that hard. I think maybe, maybe he actually still does, but... Um, it was a back injury in Bali. Yeah, that's right, it was the back injury. It was. He got that, but he got yeah. um, treatment on that. Yeah. In Bali, that's right. There's their coach, Chini Wee. She was number one seed at World Championships of 2009 with Wong Pei Ti. And one of the things I've noted uh, during this tournament is that Tiwi Yi, who has many uh, similarities to Cooking Cat, the former, or the the last, or the last um, Malaysian to win a medal in men's doubles, a lot of similarities in uh, playing style. But he's been playing with a smile on his face the whole week. Mm -hmm. Tio. Tiwi Yi. Yeah. And I did, when, when I played on my little level, I hated playing players who smiled. <laughs> because it seemed like, okay, they were confident. <laughs> uh, it's a good rally again. Six, seven, six, six. And there's some famous stories from the sports world about this. If there's any golf interested viewers, then uh, Phil Mickelson, when he won his first major, he smiled the entire Seven. final round. Seven. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's contagious. Yeah. Kobayashi. A little bit of a reverse slice on it to keep it straight. Yeah, aiming it towards the right hip of Tio Yi. from Kobayashi. Brilliant. Oh, what a rally! Uh, well, our players may have lost the rally. Chini Wee acknowledges what a good rally that was. Fabulous badminton. So 
to the mid-game interval with a three-point advantage, Huki and Kobayashi. Tanakin Her, player coach, former Malaysian player. Malaysians need to be careful here. Yeah, they do. I think. Um, I think the. Uh, they probably both are a little bit tense. I mean, Japanese probably also tense, but I think on your sin is uh, perhaps a little bit more tense than the others. Nine. remember him making a service error in the early stages and I thought oh, that was that, a bit, so that yeah. also looked um, nervous it looked like um, Kandra Vijaya when he was playing the Indonesian well do you know Morton and I were discussing it yesterday because he seems now in general to rush his serve more he doesn't settle no exactly and but he's doing that all the time yeah but that's generally because you don't want to stand too long time there I think most players settle. Yeah, that's a bit of a shocker from Kobayashi. Second service error from him. Yeah, don't shout out and celebrate your opponent's service error. Ashi. And that's really important that the opponents 14, cannot rule 10. out that he makes these rushes towards the net. It's not only Hawkey who comes forward. And I think that that's becoming increasingly more important in men's doubles that we have these uh, preferred formations. But the non-preferred formation becomes more and more important that you... Um, work well there and sometimes it's the difference between two pairs the ability to, uh, to work in the different formations and we can see the Japanese pair they're, they're content lifting to uh, TAE trying to keep in at the back court yeah whether it's back or shoulder there's very little power in that smash so very little pressure but um, they've also started on the uh, far side of the court, the Malaysians, and um, I seem to recall so earlier in the tournament, they haven't been that um, focused on that side there. They get a little bit more bite in their attack when they change ends. Wonderful return. Oh, nice. so, it's got to uh, sort of uh, be a bit more of a threat. You know, that the opponents know you, you hit one smash and then something uh, creative comes, and another lift, one smash, something creative. You've got to sort of um, show that you're ready to fire four or five smashes. Oh! 
player and I think he's also been the coach uh, I think actually on two occasions at least so maybe he's actually coached to you and on and has yeah. some extended knowledge of uh, Malaysian care. That's a distinct possibility. Well, I think themselves in that 13, formation. Another service error for all you said. Yeah, I think a lot is going to ride on the um, Start of the second game. Three point, point opportunities, point seven of them for Huki and Kobayashi. Oh, that's magnificent. Wasn't such a bad return of serve, but Kobayashi was right on it. Brilliant. You got it. Don't believe it. Really don't believe it. It's gone wide. Brilliant save by Yugo Kobayashi. Quite extraordinary. 21 13. The opening game. 16 minutes. Very Look at the save. What wonderful images. He's even looking and checking what's happening. Oh, he loses points. He didn't point the toes. to the good Hoki and Kobayashi. It's 
So obviously we couldn't hear what was being said by Chini We. So I'm interested to know what you would have said to the Malaysians, Steen. Yeah, I, I would have um, tried to cheer them up a little bit by saying that now we're playing with the drift, so um, so we have a better chance of um, killing our attack. And then um, we've got to um, we've got to get the uh, best formation on court. We've got to get to you to the front court. Um, and I think uh, the Japanese pair have um, flipped him a number of times, so we've got to have a plan for how we're going to uh, move him forward there. Like I said, also when he's at the back court, he's got to sort of show that he's willing to uh, work really hard, otherwise it becomes too predictable. But the goal is still to get him uh, forward. Yeah. And. Um, Probably would have tried something psychologically as well because I, I feel that Ong Yu Sin is just um, too tense at the moment and uh, sort of lacking confidence. He he goes around like he doesn't believe he can win this semi final match. And I don't know what I would have said, but maybe something about what we discussed that before Denmark and uh, so on, they were their two best results was winning uh, international. Uh, tournaments and so on so I would try to sort of level them so they don't see them as um, uh, the World Tour final champions or I don't know yeah. you have to know the players a little bit better but but definitely the preferred formation and tiu has got to uh, take control over the uh, front court so if it's Hoki he's got to beat him if it's um, Kobayashi then he's got to beat him anyway uh, and, and a little bit easier um, probably flick Hoki uh, a bit more as well and uh, try and push our defense forward a little bit so we uh, put pressure on uh, the Japanese pair yeah. but right now they're not getting the uh, start that they needed and um, quite the opposite actually And, and we've got to sort of uh, got to stay in there and make them think we cannot um, gift it to uh, Hoki and uh, Kobayashi short service well did well to get the way there And that was a much better serve from Kobayashi. Made a serve this error last time he served. Seven three. It's different the position they're up against Tiu and Ong, but they're also looking different from from the rest of the tournament. I'm certain that. Um, they're feeling the um, pressure of the situation. Oh, that was going wide. Ah, it's clever. Bob Ayashi saw that Tiwi Yi was moving forward, held the shot, and then pushed it down the line from where he'd come from. That's great awareness. And the mental pressure, of course, comes from the fact that all the four pairs that are in these semi-finals, I mean, it's realistically that they can dream about winning the yeah. whole tournament. Yeah, in my opinion, Hoki Kobayashi, rather big no, favourites, 60% or more, in my opinion, uh, to win it all, but it's doable. Mm. all of the remaining three pairs in my yeah. opinion. Uh, it's a bit like the men's singles, isn't it? Where, yes. you know, it's it's one of those four players or pairs title for the taking. Ten, three. Oh, this is a very, very handsome lead. Ten, three advantage. Good. 11-3.
eight points advantage in coin friendly. This player, player looks as if they're in his own. Doubles. We saw a pair come back from 2 11 down to make it very, very close. So this is not beyond the realms of possibilities. Not probable, but certainly possible. Yeah, and I think we've, there's a good chance that we're going to see. I sort of Four. modified it a little bit there with a good chance. I was about to say, <laughs> we're, I'm certain we're going to see, but there's a good chance we're going to see um, Ong and Tio um, play much better now because they've they pretty much lost it. Mm. They're down one game, 11-3 at the interval, and, and for um, Kobayashi and Hoki, they just need to sort of like, finish the job. Uh, right now, it looks like they are very much um, focused on doing so. I would have expect that the Ong and Tio to sort of loosen up a little bit and uh, let go of the tension and say, okay, all is lost anyway, so let's hit it. Good return again. Yeah. Nice. Five, 5.13. is increasing their chance-wise percentage of taking the title. They're really playing well in um, sort of um, adding, must be adding confidence from this match here. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to finish on the strong as well. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You were talking about him at the front of the court. Takoro Hoki finishing it very efficiently. there that uh, Kobayashi he uh, fought all the way. Seven, Wide. Eight, eight, 
Yeah, yeah, sometimes you just need to hang in there long enough until the sort of uh, bubble is burst with your opponents. Yes. Give them a chance to become nervous as well. But yeah. I mean, if you're leading 17 8, you yeah. won't really become nervous. Yeah. And, uh, and they've been in a world championship final before, so, you know, this is, yeah. this is not unknown territory. They're, they're just. Um, they're riding on a high. Kobayashi yeah. and Hawking. It's been. These two and a half months, they've been sort of like career changing for them. Yeah. They, they are thinking 2024 Paris now. They're yeah. contenders. Uh, very much so. Well left. Oh, well, it was called in. They've challenged. Understandably challenged. Challenge. Eight, eight, eight. Oh. 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 Two points away from a second consecutive Nine, World eight, Championship eight, final. Eight, eight. Ahoki and Kobayashi. They have been brilliant today. They have been absolutely magnificent. Oh! So it's over. Nine, nineteen. Malaysians haven't been able to expose any flaws in. Uh, Japanese game. No. Oh, clever. Lovely, lovely play. And a lovely way to bring up match point opportunities. And they convert on their first 21-13, 21-9 in just a little over 30 minutes. What an extraordinarily good performance by Takora Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi. Second consecutive World Championship final. Two years after reaching the final in Basel. It was a surprise two years ago. It is no surprise this year. And for the Japanese pair, it's a sixth final. A fifth final in their last six tournaments. Remarkable. for the victory that was impressive 21 13 21 9 well the Malaysians can be proud that they've won a bronze medal first medal for Malaysian men's double fair for 11 years Coming up next is the first of our men's singles semi-finals. It's an all-Indian affair with Lakshya Sain up against the former world number one, Kadapu Shrikanj.
venue here this evening in the vibrant city of Welba. Next to the running track and football stadium, Carolina Marin Sports Palace, named after the three-time former world champion. 